In the last unit, we took a look at ionic bonds and the compounds formed by ionic bonding. In this unit, we're going to take a look at covalent bonds and the compounds formed from covalent bonding called molecules. In ionic bonding, it happens because of a transfer of electrons. A metal atom has its valence electrons transferred to a nonmetal atom. Why? Because the nonmetal atom has a high attraction to electrons, electronegativity. But what happens when two nonmetals come together? I mean, they both can't gain, so they end up sharing their unpaired valence electrons. And that's how a covalent bond forms. The word covalent means to share valence electrons. Covalent share valence electrons. You can tell how many covalent bonds an element can form by the number of unpaired electrons that are in the dot diagram of that particular element. Chlorine has one unpaired electron, it can form one covalent bond. Phosphorus has three unpaired electrons, it can form three covalent bonds. Nitrogen also has three unpaired electrons, it can form three covalent bonds. Oxygen only has two unpaired electrons. They can form two covalent bonds, as is the case with sulfur. Because all nonmetals have relatively high electronegativity, when they bond together, the difference in their electronegativity is going to be generally less than 1.7. And the smaller the difference, the more covalent character they will have. When atoms bond, they will bond in such a way that their unpaired electrons pair together. For example, chlorine has one unpaired electron. Hydrogen has one unpaired electron. And when they bond, they share their unpaired valence electrons. This is much stronger than an ionic bond. If you remember, an ionic bond is just a surface attraction. It's easily broken. But when hydrogen and chlorine covalently bond, their atomic orbitals become molecular orbitals. In other words, the electrons get shared between the two atoms. They no longer belong to just one or the other, but to both. And so, technically speaking, the atoms actually become part of each other. They become one entity known as a molecule. When nitrogen forms bonds with hydrogen, it forms three covalent bonds. One hydrogen pairs up with that unpaired valence electron. One hydrogen pairs up with that unpaired valence electron. And one hydrogen pairs up with that one unpaired valence electron. Notice how nitrogen now has a stable octet. So the ultimate goal is the same as an ionic bonding, for atoms to gain a stable octet. But the means to get there is different. In ionic bonding, atoms have to lose or gain electrons to get there. Here, they share electrons to get there. Notice hydrogen doesn't have a stable octet. That's because it only has one energy level, and the first energy level can only hold up to two electrons. So hydrogen's happy with just two. Oxygen has two unpaired valence electrons, so it can form two covalent bonds. One hydrogen can share there. The other hydrogen can share there and give you the familiar molecule of water. That's why the formula of water is H2O, because oxygen needs to pair up with two electrons and two hydrogens can provide those two electrons to pair up with. Everybody's happy, and we've got this beautiful bent molecule known as water. Single bonds are only part of the equation. When two oxygens bond together, what's going to end up happening is these two electrons will pair up, and then these two electrons will pair up. And what your molecule will end up looking like is two pairs of shared electrons and these electrons, these unshared pairs, remain unshared. I'm putting them still at 90 degree angle to each other. Notice 90 degree, 90 degree. But I've tilted them so that the molecule is symmetrical. For nitrogen, these two unpaired electrons will pair up. These two unpaired electrons will pair up. And these two unpaired electrons will pair up giving you a molecule that looks like this. Or three shared pairs. Now this unshared pair and this unshared pair are still there. And that is the dot diagram for diatomic nitrogen. 
By diatomic, I mean a molecule made of two atoms of the same element. The compounds that are made from covalent bonds are called molecules. You will generally not find a metal in a molecule. And over the course of this year, you will not find a metal in a molecule. If there's a metal in your compound, that compound's ionic. If that compound is made of only nonmetals, it's covalently bonded and it forms these particles called molecules. Now, because molecules are not ions, ions are charged, and when charges move, they conduct electricity. There's no charges here. There's no gain or loss of electrons. There's only sharing. So because there are no charges, molecules cannot carry electrical charge because they don't have electrical charge to carry. It's kind of like a mail truck that doesn't have any mail. I mean, it can move, but it's not going to be delivering any mail. So if there's no charge, it can't deliver charge. Therefore, molecular substances cannot conduct electricity, no matter what their phase is. Now, there's going to be one exception we're going to do later in the year, a substance called acids. They are the lone exception to the rule, because they're kind of like a cross between molecules and ionic. And we'll get to that way later.